plans. Good morning, America. This morning's fierce fight. A battle to save lives in California's raging wildfires. New video from inside the fire zone. A deputy driving through the flames to rescue people. Watch your leg, watch your leg. Why this situation could now be getting worse. The latest on the conditions this morning. Taking heat, President Trump under fire for his blow to the Affordable Care Act saying he's only interested in one thing. Getting great health care for this country. What it could do to your insurance premium as he faces additional criticism with his new threat to pull out of the nuclear agreement with Iran. What he wants Congress to do now. Horrors in captivity. The American woman and her family held hostage by the Taliban for five years, arriving in Canada overnight, revealing a painful event from their time as prisoners. The murder of my infant daughter, Martyr Boyle. Their hopes to build a new future now for their family. And amazing upsets, a wake-up call in the world of college football this morning. The gridiron shockers. Touchdown! And the play that has people flipping out. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Hey, good morning. We are heading into another difficult day in California where they're dealing with the deadliest wildfires in state history. We're looking at a new round of hot, dry winds today, which are expected to fuel those flames of a situation that's already dire in so many places. We want you to look at this body cam footage, however, from a sheriff's deputy. He was driving through a neighborhood completely engulfed by flames. Yeah, we're going to play more of this coming up. He actually rescues somebody. Here, though, is what we know this morning. 17 fires burning right now in the state. 5,700 structures destroyed. At least 35 people dead. And these fires have been burning for nearly a week now. Rob is standing by with the forecast, but we're going to start with ABC's Lindsay Janice, who is in hard-hit Santa Rosa for us this morning. Lindsay, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula. We have had fresh evacuations in Sonoma County overnight. These fires are on the move, being driven by stronger winds. Fire conditions this weekend being described as critical. It comes as we are getting our first glimpse into what it was like for first responders and residents the night that firestorm first tore through these communities, causing utter devastation. Shots up this! This morning, incredible images from inside the initial response to what is now the deadliest week in California wildfire history. The body cam on this Sonoma County Sheriff's deputy rolling as he races to warn residents in the middle of the night, a wall of flames closing in. The deputy gasping for air as he helps a disabled woman into his car. Watch your leg, watch your leg. Sir! Massive fire engulfing the road. He races to safety Stand using his megaphone to alert the community. Office, mandatory evacuation order, leave your homes. The terrifying firestorm haunting pass. hundreds of thousands of residents in this area who are now bracing for more destruction. So we're one windstorm away from having this town demolished. Overnight, the battle against the giant infernos intensifying with strong winds and low humidity. This is a dangerous event. It is not over. Stay away from the houses. Firefighters scrambling to contain the 17 fires, so far scorching more than 200,000 acres. This is painstaking work. Yes, it is. It's very tedious, very hard. Uh, you can tell by the... Uh, the incline of the slope, plus the conditions we work in, obviously smoky, hot, uh, low humidity. This is the meat and potatoes of firefighting. The flames claiming the lives of at least 35 people, hundreds more missing. And so many now homeless, like Michael Clements, a local firefighter. More than anything, I, was, I wanted to get my family out, and that's all I cared about. 40 active firefighters lost their homes in these fires. This was Mike Clement's home. He says all he had time to do was grab his cell phone, his wallet, his family, and get out. There was an orange wall of flames coming through his back window. This is all that's left. This is the metal garage frame you can see here, and he says a brand new car in the driveway. This was a 3,000 square foot home with four bedrooms, and you can see the entire neighborhood looks like this. Just utter devastation. 5% of homes here in Santa Rosa destroyed the damage estimate at this point more than 1.2 billion dollars this crisis not over yet Dan and Paula 
Oh, those visuals are just so haunting. Lindsay Janice, thank you yeah, for your reporting. The power of the inferno. Absolutely. And as mentioned, the conditions, they are not favorable for fighting those fires today. So let's get it over to Rob, who's tracking it all. Hey, Rob. Good morning, guys. We are looking at for a setup similar to last week, and we've already seen winds gusting over 50 miles an hour this morning across Mount uh, Diablo. So the Diablo winds will be blowing. We've got red flag warnings. Really, it's a statewide event, but we begin, I think, across Northern California, where those winds are already to the critical criteria, and then we shift it down to Southern California as we go through later on today and, and, and tonight. But 24 mile per hour winds there in Santa Rosa, Napa Valley, the higher elevations. Really concerned about that area as we go through the afternoon. And again, coming on tonight through tomorrow morning, SoCal will be the main threat. More on this, plus a severe weather threat across the rest of the country in just a few minutes. Dan Paula? A lot to worry about, Rob. Thank you. Let's move now to the developing story about President Trump and your health care. Millions of Americans bracing for changes to their health plans this morning. The president taking a major swing at the Affordable Care Act with the swipe of a pen. And ABC's David Wright joins us from the White House with more on this executive order and what it all means. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula and Dan. Some big changes ahead, but the president says he's ready to make a deal. Overnight, he tweeted that Obamacare is causing grief and tragedy for so many, he urged Democrats to get smart and deal. Well, Republicans have already tried and failed to repeal and replace Obamacare, so the president is trying to force Congress to act. Even as he dealt what could be a fatal blow to the Affordable Care Act, President Trump insisted he's ready to make a deal, and not just with the Republicans. If the Democrats should come to me, I would even go to them, because I'm only interested in one thing, getting great health care for this country. But for now, Democrats don't buy it. Make no mistake, last night the president single-handedly decided to raise America's health premiums for no reason except spite and cruelty. What Trump did was end $7 billion in Obamacare subsidies to insurance companies, payments designed to help them discount prices for low-income customers. A federal judge ruled last year that the subsidies were illegal because the Obama administration authorized them without an appropriation from Congress. That money is a subsidy for insurance companies. Take a look at their stocks. Look where they are. They're going through the roof. Now, insurance premiums are likely to go through the roof to make up the difference, jumping by as much as 20 percent, according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office. Middle-class customers like Marcy Shelton, a retiree in Nevada, would likely feel the brunt of this. If it gets too high, I'm afraid that I'm just not going to be able to afford it at all, and that's terrifying. But the poorest Americans would have some protection because of other provisions in Obamacare. The taxpayers would still be on the hook to make up the difference for them, which, according to the CBO, could add nearly $20 billion a year to the federal deficit. We are going to have great health care in our country. We're taking a little different route than we had hoped. Now, a bipartisan group of lawmakers have a bill that would restore those subsidies. They say they have the votes to pass it. Two problems, though. Not clear if it's ever going to get up for a vote and not clear if the president would sign it. Dan and Paula? I think the president said it best. They're taking a little bit of a different route. Uh, David, thanks for your reporting from the White House. Um, and coming up in our next half hour, we know so many of you have questions about what's going on with your health care. We're going to answer those questions, help you navigate the complex and ever-changing new health care environment. That's coming up, but we're going to turn now to another controversial move from the president, threatening to leave the Iran nuclear deal. Iran's president, however, is hitting back, saying the U.S. is isolated and its opposition to the agreement. And ABC's Gloria Riviera is in Washington for us this morning. Good morning to you, Gloria. Good morning, Paula. Congress now has 60 days to demand more from Iran, but there's been no indication yet Iran is even open to renegotiation. One former State Department official described Trump's about face to me as a huge hit to America's reputation, upholding its commitments, calling that the only true currency in international relations. This morning, a chorus of grave concern from the United States' major allies around the world after President Trump declared he will terminate the nuclear deal with Iran if Congress doesn't toughen it up. The Iran deal was one of the worst and most one-sided transactions 
the United States has ever entered into. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who reportedly fought against the president's efforts to decertify Iran's compliance, said Friday he believes U.S. partners in the deal will get on board. I fully expect that our allies and friends in Europe and in the region are going to be very supportive in efforts undertaken to deal with Iran's threats. But many of the country's biggest allies are defending the deal. The UK, France, and Germany announcing they are committed to the full implementation of the nuclear agreement in their shared national security interest. But in the Middle East, praise from Iran's frequent sparring partner, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. I congratulate President Trump for his courageous decision today. He boldly confronted Iran's terrorist regime. Trump wants the deal expanded to restrict Iran's ballistic missile program and support of terror. The Iranian regime continues to fuel conflict, terror, and turmoil throughout the Middle East and beyond. But those elements were never part of the agreement, negotiated by multiple countries over years. Iranian President Hassan Rouhani had this warning should the U.S. change course. If other parties do not fulfill their promises, we will not hesitate even for one moment and will respond. And this morning, another country weighing in, Russia saying it deeply regrets Trump's decision. Dan, Paula? Gloria, thank you. Let's go to Austin, Texas now, and ABC News political consultant Matthew Dowd. Hey, Matthew, good morning. Good morning. So let's start with the, what the president has just done on the Iranian nuclear deal. Where does this leave us, and, and what, in your view, is the impact on our national security? Well, Dan, I think it's exceedingly problematic. As you know, there's seven countries that were part of this accord. Six of the countries are opposed to what Donald Trump just did, including the UK, China, Russia, France, and Germany. And so I think it sets us up in a position just like after the pulling out of the Paris Climate Accord, where we are on the outs of the international community. And this was the first time we actually ever had an agreement with Iran to at least slow down their nuclear development very problematic for this president, and it's going to be very hard for him to get what he wants out of this Congress. And he seems, in terms of health care, he seems to be like kind of punting to, to Congress as well. We know that Obamacare was expected to really implode on its own, um, but now this is just accelerating the process. And now, uh, Matt, he's being sued by nearly 20 states uh, because he wants to stop these uh, subsidies. So what could the political risks here be for the president? Well, you know, this is like you having a car that's got problems in it, that it's, it's got malfunctions in it, and then you puncture the tires and put sugar in the gas tank and say, help me fix the car that I just am breaking. Uh, it's a huge problem in this. He now owns health care. It is no longer mm. Obamacare. Donald Trump owns health care. And from a political perspective, he's in a real big problem. He's holding hostage, as was talked about earlier in the show, millions of people and their premiums and their care in order to accomplish something politically. And the other thing about this is, keep in mind, President ba Obama, Obamacare, the Paris uh, Climate Accord, and the Iran Nuclear Agreement are all more popular than President Trump is in America today. Yeah, with one swipe of the pen, as you said, he now owns health care. Uh, Matt, thanks for your insight and analysis from Austin for us this morning. Great to be here. And uh, we do want to turn now to a developing story overnight. The American mother and her family held hostage by the Taliban for five years. They landed in Canada. They're now sharing horror stories. ABC's Brian Ross has more on what the family is revealing about what happened to them during their life in captivity. The horrid details of their captivity are emerging this morning as the freed hostage family arrived overnight in Toronto, just 48 hours after being freed. Seething with anger, Joshua Boyle recounted how his wife and three children were treated, including a reference to an infant child killed by their captors, a Taliban group run by the notorious Haqqani family network. The stupidity and the evil of the Haqqani network's kidnapping of a pilgrim and his heavily pregnant wife was eclipsed only by the stupidity and evil of authorizing the murder of my infant daughter, Martyr Boyle. Boyle, a Canadian national, spoke alone, confirming the rape of his wife, American Caitlin Coleman, echoing an account she revealed on a Taliban hostage tape during her captivity. My children have seen their mother defile. Not as a lone action by one guard, but assisted by the captain of the guard and supervised by the commandant. Caitlin Coleman was seven months pregnant when she and her husband were kidnapped while on what they called a hiking vacation in Afghanistan. As a hostage, she gave birth to three children, 
who became America's littlest hostages. Her father, Jim Coleman of Stewartstown, Pennsylvania, told ABC News he is still angry with his daughter's husband for taking her to Afghanistan in the first place. What I can say is, you know, taking your pregnant wife to a very dangerous place, to me and, and the kind of person that I am, it's unconscionable. Boyle had refused to allow his family to fly on an American military aircraft after they were freed and insisted they return home to Canada, not the U.S. Obviously, it will be of incredible importance to my family that we are able to build a secure sanctuary for our three surviving children to call a home. Brian Ross, ABC News, New York. That's just a horrifying story. Our thanks to Brian Ross. We're going to move now, though, to the new information coming out about that shooting in Las Vegas. We're learning about a terrifying new target for the gunman, as well as the timeline of the deadliest mass shooting in America. And ABC's Ariel Reshef has more. A visibly shaken Las Vegas sheriff revealing a new timeline, nearly two weeks after the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. My intent today is to provide some clarification on some outstanding issues out there in the public forum. Correcting information given earlier this week, saying hotel security officer Jesus Campos had been shot at 9.59, six minutes before Stephen Paddock began his vicious assault from the Mandalay Bay's 32nd floor. The hotel's parent company disputing this time gap. I am very well aware of the MGM statement provided yesterday. I agree with their statement. Now Las Vegas authorities agreeing. At 10.05 p.m., Paddock shot Campos and seconds later unleashed his hail of gunfire on the crowd below. He attempted to relay that information via uh, his radio and it was confirmed because he also relayed that information via his cell phone. For 10 minutes between 10.05 and 10.15, hundreds of bullets raining down on unsuspecting concert goers. Breach, breach. <laughs> By 10:17, officers arrived on the 32nd floor, determining the shooting had ceased. And the sheriff with another stunning disclosure. During those 10 minutes of terror, the suspect turning his fire on these fuel tanks at nearby McCarran Airport. Paddock also deliberately targeting first responders as they rushed to the scene. Raw emotion as the sheriff spoke of their heroism and of officer Brady Cook. Uh, Brady sustained a substantial wound to his shoulder. Uh, through his bicep, into his chest, and out his back. And the reason why I bring this one up, he asked me if he could go back to work today. So many heroes that night. 58 people died in that attack. The sheriff says 45 are still in the hospital, some of them in critical condition. The FBI so far has found no ties between the gunmen and any extremist groups. Still no clear motive, but investigators do believe he acted alone. Can you imagine if he had been able to hit those gas tanks? It could have been catastrophic. Uh, Ariel, thank you very much. Uh, as we said, it's been a busy morning in the weather department, so let's get a, kick it back over to Rob. What's happening? Uh, we'll start you off with the California fires. You're going to have an interesting piece of video I want to show you. I don't, this hasn't been shown too much. It was filmed a couple of days ago as a, somebody was trying to get out of the fire zone. This tree looking like a, almost like a jackal under the hollowed out tree burning from the inside out. We're going to see more of this today. Drying out winds. Temperatures are going to be warm. Also, humidity levels dropping drastically to below 10% in some areas for northern and southern California. So these are dangerous, critical uh, fire weather conditions. And we have severe weather conditions across parts of northern Missouri, getting through northern Illinois, strong winds, large hail, maybe a few tornadoes, and a flood watch into Chicago for stormy days here today. That's a quick check on what's happening for the national weather headlines. Here now is your local forecast. Hey, good morning, Washington. If you are headed to the wharf this weekend, conditions should be pretty nice. We're talking a little bit warmer, no longer in the 60s. Highs today about 10 degrees warmer in the mid to upper 70s. Clouds to start the weekend, but getting into a little bit more sunshine, I think, later today. Event goes until 10 o'clock. Overnight lows in the 50s in the outlying suburbs to low 60s in town. And we have a big warm up tomorrow in the mid 80s. We're back in the 60s after a fall cold front Monday and Tuesday. Opening of Colorado ski season plus a hurricane headed towards Ireland that huh. in the next half an hour.
Sounds good. <laughs> sounds good? <laughs> like, no, I'm saying ski season <laughs> sounds good. Ski season sounds amazing, which I'm yeah. surprised you're actually here because you're such an avid skier. I'm working my way Maybe out next there. weekend. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you're not skiing this weekend. You're here delivering I am these here. headlines. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning Ryan. to you, Paula and Dan. Robert, good morning to you. Adrian, uh, we're in the missing pilot formation. Where is she? I don't know. <laughs> yes. Good morning, everyone. We're going to begin in Georgia. Five people under arrest in connection with the murder of a black man back in 1983. Two of those arrested. Police officers charged with obstruction. Two civilians, 59-year-old Frankie Gebhardt and 58-year-old Bill Moore, are charged with killing Timothy Coggins, which investigators say was racially motivated. Police say a witness came forward with new information that helped them crack this cold case. In Puerto Rico, House members led by Speaker Paul Ryan touring areas.